Okay, welcome to lesson 15 of the additional maths course. Today we're going to be looking at the ambiguous case of the sine rule. You might think, oh, I've done the sine rule at GCC and I'm great at it. I can find angles and sides using the sine rule. There's no issues. Well, think again. Okay, you probably haven't met cases where the sine rule might have two possible solutions. So we're going to look at that today. Um, before we have a look at that question, though, we just got to make sure that you know what the sine rule is and the cosine rule, uh, the, 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 the different formulae for any triangle that you need to be able to, to use to solve different problems. OK, so firstly, let's um, let's talk about the triangle itself. If we have a triangle, we as mathematicians label the angles a, B, and C. There are three angles. Let's might as well call them the angles A, B, and C. We have used the capital letters A, B, and C for those angles. And then the side lengths opposite those angles are labeled little a, little b, and little c. Okay, so angle A is opposite, opposite side A. Okay, so they are opposite each other. And then if we label them like that, then the following things hold true. Firstly, that side length A divided by the sine of angle A is equivalent to side length B divided by the sine of angle B. And that's also equivalent to side length C divided by the sine of angle C. Okay, not angle C as in the place, angle C. And though that formula there is called the sine rule. Usually it's only used in two parts, okay? So when you're actually trying to solve something, we create an equation with two parts, we don't bother with a third one. But it is true that all three parts are equal, okay? So that is the sine rule. Next, in this triangle, the following is also true, that if we focus on side length a, B, and C, and then the angle opposite side length A, then A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. Okay, so that is also true. That is called the cosine rule, namely because it has cos in it. Okay, so that there is the second formula for any triangle. And the third one is that the area of any triangle is always equal to half of side length A times side length B times sine of the angle C. And that is basically true for any two side lengths multiplied by the sine of the angle between those two side lengths. So A and B have angle C between them, but you could have done C and B with angle A, you could have done C and A with angle B, okay? Now, if you want to know the proof of these different formulae and where they come from, please feel free to comment in, in this video and say, please, can you show um, a video showing the proofs of these? Um, and I will do so, okay? But we're just gonna be using these formulae. Firstly today, just the sine rule. Um, but if you want to practice the others, then the textbook also uses the others. Um, so you need to become fluent in those three different formulae. So today we're gonna look at this one. A triangle ABC has an angle of 32 degrees at A. Side length AB is 7 centimetres. Side length BC is 4 centimetres. Find the angle at C. Now, sometimes when they talk about a triangle, they use the letter A, the letter B and the letter C for the vertices of the points, the three points of the triangle. So it would be like calling in this main triangle here, this point is A, this point is B, and this point is C. So that would be three points. If you join them up with straight lines, define a triangle. Okay. And therefore ABC is that triangle. And angle A is known as the angle at point A. Angle B is the angle at point B, etc. OK, so when I'm when it's talking here, a triangle ABC has an angle at A, 32 degrees, then that is just saying at vertex A, we have an angle of 32 degrees. And then the length between 
point A and point B is seven centimeters, etc. Okay. So we need to find the angle at C. So a good idea would be to draw the problem out. Okay, so let's draw it out. So we have, let's just draw a general triangle like that. That's about 32 degrees. So I'll make that my angle at A. Okay, so there's point A. Um, a, B is seven centimeters. B, C is four centimeters. A to B, let's call that seven centimeters. Let's call that four centimeters. Okay, so I think I've got all the information from the question. And that point is point C. Okay, so I want to find the angle at C. So I'm asking for that angle there. I mean, let's call it theta. I could have called it C, but I'm going to call it theta. So I know from the sine rule that the formula holds true for angles with the sides opposite it. Okay, so A with sine AB with sine BC with sine C. Now, this form of the sine rule is useful when you're trying to find lengths. You can flip all the fractions and it's still true. Okay, in terms of if A divided by sine A is equal to B divided by sine B, then the reciprocal of each of them is also going to be equal. Okay, if a number is equal to another number, then the reciprocals will be equal because they have the same number anyway. So I could do sine A divided by A equals sine B divided by B. And this will be more useful and easier if I'm trying to find an angle. This is the one I use. It's much easier to find the numerator than it is to find the denominator. So the unknown should be in the numerator rather than in the denominator. OK, so in this question here, I'm going to use the one where the angle is on top of the fraction. So I know that I'm going to be dealing with sine theta. So theta is my unknown divided by seven because that's opposite it. That will equal sine of 32 divided by four. OK, so here's an equation with one unknown, something I can solve. So I multiply both sides by seven. I get sine theta is sine 32 divided by four. All of that on my calculator times seven. That gives me 0.927 dot dot dot. OK, keeps going, but I'm not going to write it all down. Please check that on your calculator. You get the same. And I know that if I've got sine theta is 0.927 that I to find the angle, use the inverse of sine of 0.927, which is 68.0 to one decimal place. And I think, great, I found an answer. It looks sensible. That looks like it might be 68 degrees. Hey ho, I'm done. But at GCC level, you probably would be done. Now we're getting more, more advanced there is actually another answer to this question. You think, well, how can that be? Well, let's look back to the previous lesson where we were solving questions like this. If I drew my sine graph for angles between zero and 180 degrees, because angles in a triangle can be up to a maximum of 180 degrees individually and minimum of zero. So if I drew the sine curve between zero and 180, it looks like that between 0 and 180. OK, there is 180. And if I wanted to find the angles for which give a height of 0 0.927, 0 0.927 is slightly below the maximum, which would be 1. So 0 0.927 will give me this angle. Great, that's 68 degrees to one decimal place, 68.0. But there's also this angle. Now, what could that be? If this distance here is 68, then so will this distance here be. So 180 minus 68.0 will give me another possible solution. So it's also equal to 112 degrees to one decimal place. Now, you might be thinking, hold on, that doesn't seem right, because this angle here is not obtuse. It's an acute angle, so it can't be 112 degrees. That doesn't make sense. OK, so let's look at the fact that maybe I drew it incorrectly. Now, 
I know that the angle at A is 32 degrees. I'm going to draw my baseline as long as I want. Okay, I'll draw it off, off to infinity. Then I'm going to draw a seven centimeter line at 32 degrees. So let's say I measured this to be 32 degrees with my protractor and I've drawn seven centimeters and I've got to a point there. Okay, so there's my point A, there's my point B. Now my point C is somewhere along this baseline and it is somewhere four centimeters away from B. So if I got my compass and drew an arc four centimeters away from B, it would probably look something like this. Okay, so that is a circle four centimeters away from B and it cuts through that baseline at two possible points. The one I had was this one, which gave me 68.0 degrees. But I could, so that's a possible point where C could be, but so that blue triangle is the one I, I created first. But I could also have this yellow triangle. And that angle there is 112.0 degrees. And you can see that as well because this length is four centimeters, that length is four centimeters. So what I've created this, this green triangle is an isosceles triangle. So if that's 68, so will that be? And therefore the angle 112 is on a straight line with the 68 and therefore it's 180 minus 68. So that's the ambiguous case of the sign rule where the information in the question is not enough to define a unique solution. It is ambiguous, okay? And you need to be careful and be aware that if you have the sign rule, between zero and 180, there are two solutions, two angles which create the same height between zero and 180. And you need to check whether the second one, the obtuse version, also works in the triangle. Sometimes it won't, okay? And that'll be when, for example, if I drew my compass and it was longer than seven centimeters, then my arc would be out here and it would only cut through at one point, okay? So sometimes it won't be ambiguous, but you have gotta be careful when it is, okay? So have a go at the next one that I'm gonna set you. In this question, I give you that you've got a triangle PQR, has an angle of 28 degrees at P. Then PQ, the length is equal to 11 centimeters and QR, the length is eight centimeters. Okay, find the size or the possible sizes of the angle at R. Okay, so pause the video at this point and have a go. Sketch it out and try and think, are there more, is there more than one solution? Okay. All right, I'm gonna go through the answer. So make sure you have had a go. The possible drawings for this are as follows. You've got your baseline. I'm gonna draw that as far as I want. The angle here is 28 degrees. That's point P. So the angle at P is 28 degrees and you've got 11 centimeters from P to Q. Then from Q to R is eight centimeters. So if I drew an arc eight centimeters away from Q, I'd probably get this. And it cuts through at two different places. So either finding this angle or I'm finding this angle and they will be 180 minus each other. Okay, but let's look at the entire thing. So let's call this theta what I want to find. And this is eight centimeters. So we're looking at the entire blue triangle here, okay? So we know that sine of theta over 11 is equal to sine of 28 over eight. And therefore we time multiply both sides by 11, we get sine theta is equal to 0.64552 dot dot dot, okay? Then you do the inverse of sine, 
of that and the calculator gives you 40.2 degrees to one decimal place. And then you think, that's this one here, that's the one I found, but there's this possible answer as well. So that would be 180 minus 40.2, which is 139.8 degrees to one decimal place. If you got both of those solutions, both of those possible values for theta, then really well done. Okay. What you should do now is you should practice lots of these types of questions. Um, so mainly with sine rule, but also the cosine rule, just until you feel like you're fluent with the sine rule, the cosine rule, the area formula. Um, and the best place to do that is exercise 8.2. So the second exercise in this textbook in chapter eight. Okay. And then we will go on to further trigonometric um, ratios and, and, and different skills that will take you way beyond GCC in the next lesson. Look forward to seeing you there. Make sure if you have any comments, anything you want me to be explaining a bit more, please do so in the comments below. Okay, see you in the next lesson.